Okay, everybody, let's talk about abstract art. So we've talked about abstract art a little bit before, but let's really look at the definition of abstract art. Abstract art is using different types of lines, colors, and shapes to show objects or to show a picture that looks a non-realistic way. So non-realistic just means it looks like it does not mimic real life. It looks a little bit different from real life. So realistic art is showing objects how they really appear in real life. So if we look at these two works of art versus this work of art, we know that the Mona Lisa is very realistic. She was painted by a realistic artist who was trying to show a style that mimics real life. Looks like almost a photograph. These two works of art are more abstract. So we can still tell that these are people. They're not so abstract that we can't tell. But the colors, the lines, and the shapes, and the patterns that are being painted on these works of art are a little bit different from real life. So Pablo Picasso is the one artist that we're really going to focus on when we learn about abstract art because he was probably one of the most famous abstract artists. He was one of the first abstract artists and he invented a form of abstract art called cubism. So these are two of his works of art right here. We can kind of tell that there's an instrument here. We can kind of tell that there's people here. But other than that, you really have to kind of study these works of art to kind of tell what he was trying to paint here. So cubism is just a type of abstract art where objects are seen from many angles and sides. Objects are also broken up into simpler or more flat shapes. Sometimes colors are different from everyday life. So if we look at these three works of art here, looking at this woman here, we can kind of see this idea of objects being shown from many angles and sides. So we can see part of her face here looks kind of realistic. But if you look at the other part of her face, it looks like a totally different side of her face. Her eye is facing a different direction. Her nose is kind of in the wrong spot. And then as you get up here to her hat and her shirt, shapes are starting to kind of be broken up into flatter, different shapes. Looking at this woman here, we can tell that these colors are not exactly like a real life photograph. And the lines and shapes are a lot, lot different from a real life person. This work of art here is very detailed, but if you look closely, you can see this guitar here and you can kind of see lots of other shapes going around the guitar. So this is really just an abstract version of a guitar seen from many different angles. So we see the stem of the guitar repeated a few times. We see the strings repeated all over these straight lines. We see the center of the guitar repeated. So it's really just kind of breaking that guitar up and repeating it over and over to make it more abstract. So the big question is, why would Picasso do this? So Picasso really started as a realistic artist, but he wanted to create his own style. He wanted to make his art look more interesting because he really did not find realistic art very interesting. He thought it was kind of boring, actually. So he believed that abstract art was more of like a puzzle or a discovery when you look at it. So these are three. So these are three of Pablo Picasso's works of art. Um, looking at this one here on the far left, this is what he was painting before he was an abstract artist. So this is looking a little bit more like real life. But then as he got this idea to show more abstract art, his paintings start to look a little bit different. So looking at this painting here, the colors are getting a little bit different from real life. Um, we call this his blue period. He painted a lot of paintings with this blue shade all over. And then as he sort of progressed and the years went on, he got to this style of really making his objects kind of broken up and more abstract. So for our next project, let's talk about what we are going to do that is kind of going to mimic abstract art and cubism. We're going to create an abstract work of art inspired by cubism that shows the theme of music. Um, so you're going to abstract at least two to three pictures that relate in some way to music and connect them together in a final drawing. So looking at these two examples from other fourth graders, let's talk about these two questions here. What big objects do you recognize that have been abstracted in these two works of art? And what do you see in the background? So is there anything else in the background that you notice Maybe it's relating to music, or maybe it's um, something different. Okay, let's look at a few more examples. 
So what do you see in these two works of art? Let's pick out, again, some objects we recognize, some things that are happening in the background. Let's describe the colors, lines, and shapes. Okay, now here's what you're going to start to think about and what you're going to start to do today. So you're going to find two or more images that relate to the theme of music. Use images that I have here or print some of your own from the iPad. So I have a ton of pictures of different instruments and things that relate to music for you to use to abstract. Start abstracting your images using the viewfinder windows. Those are the windows that we use for our abstract characters. And you can use pencils, markers, or any other drawing materials you like. Use this large piece of white paper on the shopping cart for your final project. Think about your background as well. What lines, colors, and shapes will you fill into the background that relates to your objects and your theme of music? So again, here's your goals. We're going to make a work of art that is abstract, not realistic. So if we're abstracting a, a guitar in the end, it really should look very different from a guitar. Your work of art is carefully drawn with your coloring supplies, and your work of art shows that theme of music clearly. So there's a couple different processes that we can start with. So I'm going to go through three different processes before we actually get our drawing supplies. So you could draw your, object, uh, draw your objects in abstract pieces. This is kind of similar to how we abstracted these characters in our practice drawings using the viewfinder windows. So you could take your picture, let's say you have a picture of a guitar, and you can just start breaking that guitar up into different pieces and drawing and coloring those pieces, and then filling up the empty spaces with more instruments and more things that relate to music. So you could just draw right onto your final copy paper. The second process is a little bit different. You could draw your objects realistically on a scrap paper and then cut them into pieces and arrange and glue them onto your final paper. So that's how these two students started. You can, if you look closely, see a piano here and a guitar and some music notes. So they drew these three objects all put together in a realistic way. And then they just cut these into pieces and glued them. And then they filled the background space with colors and lines and shapes. Same thing with this person here. They cut their guitar and their clarinet and their music notes into pieces. The third process is to combine the two. You could start drawing and abstracting your objects and also cutting your pieces and fitting them together within your picture. I like this process the best. I think this is the best outcome because you get a lot of variety. You have some drawing, you have some cutting and gluing, and it's just a lot more interesting to look at. But you choose your process. Do you want to just draw? Do you want to draw then cut? Or do you want to do both? Okay? All right, going back to our goals here, we're going to get started. Um, you're going to find some images you can start to abstract and find your final copy paper to start.